Last Sunday on the Feast of Pentecost, I began to ponder what happened to those first apostles who were sent out by the Spirit into their world. And I was reminded of our study of Acts a few years ago. And one of the things that gripped me during that study and stays with me to this day is how much those first apostles suffered. I mean, boy, you read the stories about Paul and every time he went into a town, they, they beat the heck out of him. He'd get up and start preaching the good news and they'd beat him up and throw him in prison. When was the last time that happened to me on a Sunday morning when I preached? Never. He could take all that and, you know, I might go home wounded because someone makes a critical comment. I was just amazed at their, their resilience, their forbearance and their courage. You know, the fact of the matter is that most of us have probably not suffered a whole lot for our faith. I was grabbed by a, a quote I read from Alan Bosak. He's a Protestant pastor in South Africa. He was part of the anti-apartheid movement. And on one occasion, he said this. He said, when we go before God that on, the, on the last day, on the judgment day, God will ask, where are your wounds? And we will say, uh, I have no wounds. And what God will say, was there nothing worth fighting for? You think about that for a minute. Do you and I have something that we are so passionate about that is so worth fighting for that we would be willing to suffer whatever might come, that we might be willing to say things that need to be said in our world that would bring us harm, physical harm. I have never been punched. I have never been thrown into prison. I was in a Bible study once at another church where I thought a guy might punch me, <laughs> but I got out of there okay. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that most of us, as faithful as we are in a whole host of ways, as much as we love our neighbors and try to do what God wants us to do. You know, we have probably, if you're like me, you have bailed out of the path that might take you down a road that, you know, would require great cost. You know, I'm not suggesting that we go out and look for trouble. But we live in a world that is broken. We live in a world where good news needs to be announced. We live in a world where there's great division. And we may well find ourselves in conversations with people where we have to speak the truth we know and it won't go well. Now, most of us won't get punched out, but it is not easy to be living in conflict with people. It is not easy to have someone get upset with you, put you down, diminish you, is it? That's why when we're at a party and somebody says, you know, a racist joke or a diminishing joke of some kind, we don't say anything, you know, just leave well enough alone. Well, Paul didn't leave well enough alone. Timothy didn't leave well enough alone. Peter didn't leave, leave well enough alone. Martin Luther King Jr. didn't leave well enough alone. Is it possible that this Pentecost season will be so filled with the Spirit that we'll be willing to let it take us wherever it goes. What is worth fighting for? What is worth fighting for that we might come away a little wounded? If we open ourselves to the Spirit, we just might find out.